Governor Sanders, friends. Governor Sanders, friends. I am delighted to be standing in Johnson Square. It is easy for me to feel at home here in the South. Georgia strains run strong in my family. And my husband's great-grandfather, Jesse Johnson, lived in Oglethorpe County, Georgia. I'm well aware of the historic setting in which we are, and I wish that this was a leisurely sort of trip that I could go and see some of your elegant old homes. I've heard it said, and I agree, that the South is not a matter of geography, but a place of the heart. And Georgia is not only a state, it is a distinctive part of America. America grows up smacking its lips over Georgia brawler chicken and Georgia peanut butter, drinking Coca-Cola, and I certainly don't want to leave out Talmy Tam. Even the World Series that started yesterday depends on Georgia for bats made of Georgia hardwood. Savannah itself is typical of the American melting pot. It grew from the English on the Oglethorpe, Salzburgers on the Baron von Rick, a colony of wealthy and cultivated Jews, a body of New England Puritans, French refugees from San Domingo, and waves of Irish fleeing famine. All have contributed their eager, fearless blood to the children of Savannah. The texture of American life is woven here. John Wesley preached here. Woodrow Wilson married here. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin near here. And Juliet Gordon Lowe, founder of the Girl Scouts, is buried here. The future is here too. The 11 dams approved by Congress will give the Savannah River Basin immense power resources. And as you well know, the Clark Hill Project will soon mean year-round navigation between Augusta and Savannah, giving the interior of Georgia direct trade routes to the ports of the world. Georgia is a state of tall men. It is a state of men of strength like Congressman Carl Benson and Senator Dick Russell. And men of peace, like Secretary of State Dean Russ. In all my years in Congress, he relied on the friendship and counsel of Carl Benson all the years that my husband has been there. And from your own Senator Russell, Lyndon learned the complex mechanics of the Senate, which made it possible for him to serve as Democratic leader. Among our most valued friendships, personal and political, were those with Senator George and Miss Lucy. But times are but times are changing, and I'm happy to have moral support today from Mrs. Sanders, the wife of your governor, and Betty Talmadge, wife of your senator, Herman Talmadge. It is comforting to have them with me to advise me and to help me make the acquaintance of so many wonderful Georgians. My main reason for coming here was to say to you that to this Democratic candidate for president and his wife, the South is a respected and valued and beloved part of this country. My husband is widely known as a busy and active man. Yes, even a rather urgently active man. But he is also something else. In this campaign, he is a tomorrow man, 
a builder man, a going ahead man. A man unafraid to run that race with a racing time that must be run by all men and all nations who do not wish to be left in the slack waters of history like solitary grounded ships in the restless, unstable flow and flood of change. In his acceptance speech, the president said, this is a dangerous and difficult world in which we live. I promise no easy answers, but I do promise this. I pledge the firmness to defend freedom, the strength to support that firmness, and a constant, patient effort to move the world toward lasting peace. It is our privilege to choose our leader. In doing so, we make a constant choice in shaping our personal destiny. Thomas Jefferson said, let the people know the facts and they will decide wisely. History has proven him right. I believe in our president and I believe in your right to choose and your wisdom to do so wisely. Thank you.